Hi. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Um, and welcome everyone who is watching us right now. Uh, we are uh, together here with Varun, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Hello. No, what did Anyone? you say? Sorry. Hi. Yeah, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> OK, I'm good too. <laughs> uh, so um, can you please talk about the um, uh, topic that you're going to tell us about today? Yeah, so today we'll be majorly looking into the Firebase extension, uh, a new feature uh, that Firebase launched a year back in this summit. So mm -hmm. we'll be, uh, you know, understanding what exactly Firebase for any new, new, uh, new uh, beginners who are not aware of Firebase. We'll be having a small, uh, you know, few few slides for that, and also we'll be looking into what is Cow functions, and then mm -hmm. we will jump into what is Firebase extensions. I'll also have some demos uh, how you can use Firebase extension for some of your products, and sort of mm -hmm. use cases for what are the extensions that is available and what you can do actually with the kinds. It's kind of a, you know, partially hands off and partially a theoretical session that I planned. Oh, that sounds amazing. Uh, and I'll leave you to it then. Perfect. So let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. You can see my screen. Yeah. Uh, now I think everybody can. OK. Uh, so the scene is all yours. Perfect. So yeah. So thanks for inviting first of all, and uh, you know I'll give you a context about this session. Um, so as I said, we're going to talk about Firebase extension. So extensions are nothing but a prepackaged add-ons that you can just install and configure for your application. So here uh, uh, to, to before beginning uh, about myself. Uh, so I run this company called Script. I also I'm also a GDE uh, for Firebase, which is a Google Ex uh, Google Developer Expert program. I also used to manage uh, GDG Chennai, the, the community in my city, uh, the Google Developer Group community in my city, and I I also program. Uh, I I'm into you know uh, the cross platform and all the all the domains majorly. I do web, I do back end, I do front end as well. And I also love jokes. So that's kind of a gist about me. And if you want to reach out to me for anything, any any specific details or any queries, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. And also you can drop me an email. Perfect. So now moving on. Uh, so the agenda for this webinar is majorly to understand what is Firebase, uh, what, what what is you know what is this tool. Uh, I'll give you a high level walkthrough about this tool and what is Cloud Functions. So Cloud Functions, uh, a small feature, I mean, not a small, but but a major feature in Firebase, how, what is exactly it is, and how it can solve your, uh, you know, your problem as a developer, and also for this extension, so which is the major agenda for the day. So, and we'll also have a small demo so that you will you will get to know what exactly Firebase extensions can do for you. So with which you will be able to, you know, do try to use something for your products and projects in Firebase and take it forward. So before before uh, we begin to anything complex, but uh, to, I'll give you a basic context of what Firebase is. Firebase is nothing but a platform, a, a BAS platform, uh, which is like backend as service. Uh, it is developed by it is developed by uh, an organization and then then acquired by Google. Now it is actually a part of Google Google's uh, developer ecosystem. So with uh, Firebase, you can build applications without worrying about your backend, right? So for any any backend developer or any any sorry any mobile developer or any web developer, uh, the major hurdle comes in when they uh, want to develop a full stack application is developing their background, right? We're, we're developing their APIs, developing their database schemes and database setup, installing all the dependencies and setting up the servers, maintaining the servers, all those things. <clears throat> so this is what uh, the BAS solutions trying to solve, and Firebase is one of the popular and uh, you know widely used uh, BAS solution because it's backed by Google. And uh, with which the the it it helps uh, developers leverage their potential to develop applications uh, without worrying about the backend, right? So when I say without worrying about backend, you have set of SDKs that you can use to build the application logic of your uh, application logic, and uh, you you just write code to build the feature functionality, right? You don't have to maintain the code, you don't have to run the code and everything. It's all taken care by the system platform platform itself. So that's kind of the leverage that developers are getting with Firebase. So Firebase is one product with have, which has multiple services. 
So it has it comes with a wide variety of uh, tool sets that solves you know basically all your needs of for an application. So I'll just give a context of here so that you will you'll know what you can potentially do with uh, Firebase. So to begin with, uh, these are three different uh, sections. One is for developers, uh, you know, when you build the code, right? So it's for, for building applications. The second segment is uh, improving your application. So you have a application up and running. You want to, you know, improve it, iterate it, make it uh, more easier, make it you more usable and stuff like that. So that is. Uh, these are the features that help you do that. And finally, you grow the business. So you are building any application developers build their application to make money or uh, make a business out of it, right? So how do you market it? Or how do you uh, you know take it to your end customer? How do you know what exactly they're using it for? Uh, what is the behavior of the users? And all those things comes into the grow your business section. So these are more like analytical tools and uh, you know um, promotional tools that uh, help you promote your I mean, um, grow your customer base. So um, we'll, we'll majorly look into this section because I, I believe a lot of people here are developers. So uh, Firebase Cloud Fire Cloud Store is uh, Cloud Fire Store is nothing but a NoSQL database that runs inside your Firebase project. So it, it, it's like you know you can uh, store collections, documents, uh, basically you know, you know uh, uh, an organized data, not like a relational data, but an organized data where you want to have a user collection. And all the user documents. Each and every user will have a user document. Those kind of um, data store is what uh, we're looking at. Firestore, and it's pretty useful for any application because you know, ultimately you need to store data, and this comes out of the box. And there is also ML Kit. So if you want to do some kind of predictive analysis or user behavior uh, understanding, all those things, you can use the ML Kit to understand and to analyze to you know uh, analyze the data within your Firestore uh, database. And similarly, you have something called Cloud Functions, and which is going to be the primary and the crucial topic for the day. So Firebase Cloud Functions are nothing but a serverless functions that runs on your uh, Firebase project, that runs on you know, Google's infrastructure. So these uh, Firebase fun functions are uh, used for uh, performing some kind of a background job, uh, some kind of uh, analysis, I mean, uh, you know, batch processing. Image processing. Hi, I think you're having a little problem with the microphone. Hope they can hear you. Um, says that you're on mute, but sorry. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, it's perfect. Perfect, perfect. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that. So, uh, <laughs> we were discussing about the cloud functions, right? So that's where cloud function comes in, uh, where you can do some kind of uh, background processing, uh, you know, batch processing, do some kind of triggering. When a user signs up, you need to send an email. When a user leaves the application or deletes your deletes their account, you need to delete all the dependent data, resize in major. Really Sorry, sorry to interrupt. We, yeah? we cannot see your screen. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is it visible? Yes. Yes. Perfect. So, uh, yeah. So that's majorly the cloud functions. And there is also an authentication module, which is like another uh, popularly used uh, Firebase feature where you can set up uh, authentication. The, the all the user, uh, you know, authenticated related services will be given by Firebase itself, and you can just opt in, like social login and all those things. Similarly, ho hosting, like you have a React app or an Angular app or any front end app, you can host it and then serve your users. Like for example, um, you know, the platform itself can build in a front end framework and then deploy it. Which comes, you know, which make, which makes your entire application runs inside Firebase. You don't have to worry about external uh, servers at all. Cloud for cloud storage is nothing but so storing your files, like you know, you building an application like YouTube, 
you want to store the media files, YouTube files, I mean, uh, your uh, video files, you can just put it in cloud, st cloud storage. And this is runs on top of Google Cloud Storage. So it's like, uh, it, it is a, you know, it is a customized version of Google GCS itself. And real-time database is nothing but a JSON structure. A JSON database is majorly used by you know majorly gaming developers, game developers, where they want to store the game data. The reason being that it is very fast uh, compared to Firestore. So uh, you know real-time games and everything that runs very smoothly on uh, real-time database. So this is a major tool set for Firebase. I guess uh, this could have given you uh, understanding on what Firebase is uh, before getting into Firebase cloud functions or extensions. Okay. So uh, if, if you're a new developer and want to build an application with, uh, with, with some technology, you can get in with, uh, you can use Firebase. Uh, two reasons. One is it's very cost effective. You pay very less for, even for a million users, uh, you pay like, you know, maximum of uh, 50 to hundred dollars. And similarly, it's very uh, easy to maintain because you don't have to worry about servers going down, scaling up, scaling down, all those issues. It, it is going to be it's handled by Google itself. Google's tech stack itself, and you don't have to worry about that. So, being a developer, not uh, not from a backend, uh, you know, backend uh, uh, background or uh, you know, DevOps background, you can just build applications, push it, you know, ship it to your users with the help of Firebase, and where it can run. So, when we talk about running applications and building applications without the backend and stuff like that, what are, what is the leverage that we're getting in, in in terms of the environment, right? So. Currently, Firebase supports almost all the environments like uh, Android, J, iOS, JavaScript, which is front end, uh, even games like Unity and C, -sharp, C, C++ run, uh, can ha I mean, have official uh, packages for Firebase. So you can literally run on any device uh, with help of the, uh, you know, the official SDKs. So you don't have to worry about uh, you know missing out any platforms. So it can run you know in any any uh, any platforms, right? So that is an, another advantage for developers, and uh, you know where you don't have to write a specific code for front end, you don't have to write a specific code for back end. It's all it comes with your native code. So if you're a JavaScript developer, you can build an entire application in JavaScript and then finish it off. So you're not worry about separate back end and stuff like that. Similarly, um, a few advantages for developers, as I said, it works across the platform where uh, it, it it you you can define uh, which platform you want, and then you have SDKs for that. And no worries about infrastructure and scaling issues. Like uh, for example, uh, today you are uh, your application is like an e-commerce plat platform, and tomorrow you're launching a sale, so you expect more people to come into your platform, right? So automatically it scales. You don't have to worry about special servers, uh, you know, adding up new servers or putting a load balancer and then all doing all those stuff. So you don't have to worry about that. It's all automatically scaled, and covers almost all the platform, all the aspects of an application in a single platform. So this means like you know. Um, often people have different services for different purpose of the application, right? Like for example, uh, traditionally they would have used AWS for running their instances, and uh, um, you know, for for example, they wanted to set up uh, a, a proper storage bucket, and they use GCS or something like that, right? And uh, they might use an external third party like Auth0 for authentication, something like that. So, but uh, with Firebase, it all comes into single platform. So you can just use one platform to build application for all the different type of uh, different type of use cases and like backend jobs, um, authentication, push notification, uh, storage, database, and everything. And it's a very cost-effective solution. As I said, uh, the pricing is uh, pretty affordable, and you can you can use it for uh, you know very affordable price, and even for a million users. So these are these are the major advantages. People, I I feel that people uh, you know uh, jump into Firebase as uh, one of their primary solution, at least for uh, very uh, very common uh, use case application, right? Like building a chatbot, uh, building a you know chat application, or building a, uh, a simple uh, no complex like not a, not a CRM can be built with the Firebase, but almost all the social application can be built with Firebase. And, some of the products that uses Firebase, like Shazam, and uh, so Hindi Hacker completely runs on Firebase. If you ask, sorry, if you access their website, uh, it, it's like a social community for uh, you know individual developers, and uh, so it completely runs on Firebase. All the posts you make, all the comments you make, and uh, everything, everything is you know served with Firebase. So that is one a big platform uh, that you know prove that Firebase can exponentially grow because it has a you know. A, a, Many millions of views every every day, right? 
similarly this uh, uh, duolingo is another uh, uh, you know language uh, you know language training application that is also runs on top of firebase so these are the popular names that uh, you know we can trust firebase for because they're using firebase on their product that is in production and uh, so yeah so th these are the major reason i mean uh, these are the major reasons that i also use uh, firebase in some of my products and my prize projects and uh, you know uh, the happy news is that it, I don't have to worry about it. It, it keeps running and no issues. Uh, it, it uh, you know, you don't have to, you can have good sleep, you know, basically. That's the major uh, reason people go with Firebase. And what is Firebase Cloud Function? So all this while we were discussing about, uh, you know, Firebase as a multiple feature, but when you come down to one single scenario, right? So uh, Cloud Functions are nothing but, as I said, serverless, uh, uh, serverless, uh, functions that uh, is like more like AWS Lambda functions or something like that. It is basically powered by Google from Go Google Cloud Function. So Firebase uses uh, Google Cloud Functions, uh, you know, infrastructure to uh, you know in a customized way. And these cloud functions are majorly used for uh, things like you know before before uh, before cloud function launched, you cannot uh, automate many many things in uh, Firebase. So Firebase was just a database with uh, real time database, and they didn't have. Uh, background jobs or anything like that. So at that time, what we used to do is that if you want to send an email to users, so we'll we'll create a server that will listen to uh, you, uh, new users or, uh, you know, that that keeps keeps polling a new, uh, when, when new user signs up or something like that and triggers their email, right? So the, uh, or if you want to, uh, you know, do like resizing images or deleting some data, handling payment, uh, payment with books and all those things, it was very hard because, even using Firebase, you need to do rely on a separate service, right? So, but with Cloud Functions, after they launched Cloud Functions, all these external APIs were, uh, you know, we, we were able to deprecate all these uh, external services that we were using, like App Engine or uh, GCS, I mean, uh, GCP or AWS EC2, all those things we deprecated and then moved everything to functions. The reason, the two, uh, the major reason is that Firebase functions are uh, just function, that's just raw fun stateless functions. That runs whenever you want it to do run. It it will not. It's not like a hundred. I mean, uh, you know, in execution all the, all the time. So it's very cost effective. Like if you uh, sign up for a million, if million user signs up, you will get a million calls, right? Million million times the function executes. But if you uh, if you have only two users, like in the beginning of the beginning stages of the application, you will be charged only for two function calls. And it, like for hundred k hundred k function calls, it's free. So you, when you start a new application, it's easy for you to grow so the reason uh, so uh, with cloud functions you can write javascript functions push it to the cloud and then it it, uh, for, it for, for functions more like it triggers like when you know, new data is created in functions uh, in, in the file store or new uh, file is created in G uh, google i mean firebase cloud storage or new user has been created this it triggers you can set you also have http triggers so when you make a post call what should happen when you make a get call you watch what should happen so these things uh makes your uh, firebase project an end-to-end -end solution right so you can run a server code you can even run an express js application inside functions so you can basically do any backend uh, uh functionality that you want to do like uh, heavy processing so uh what do we people what do people use for cloud functions for right very common use cases are you know sending email when a user signs up right when uh, so basically you can set up a trigger to listen to uh, new user signs up when a new user sign up or you know user is updated on all those things trigger an email to them and you can also like uh, like set up uh, when a new order is made you can write a function trigger to send a notification to that order and uh, cleaning that dependent data like for example with gdpr and all those things if you if some data if some user say decides to delete their uh, you know um, data when they uh, when they you know disconnect their application or discontinue their the application, uh, you can write a function to delete all the dependent data like orders, uh, bookings or uh, chats and everything. It can it can just do it and go. When you do it in your front end itself, it'll be very huge. Right? And uh, with functions, you just do it in the back end and then it'll 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 run like a smooth engine. And also heavy operations, image of image processing, like resizing images and. Uh, uh, you know, doing some kind of uh, cropping cropping images or uh, color extraction from images, all those things you can use uh, node libraries and uh, run run with help of functions and translations. Like 
uh, often this comes when you build a kind of a C, uh, you know, CMS application or something like that, or a social application where you want to uh, do some kind of a translation on top of your uh, content. Like when you create a content, you need to translate it. So uh, this is also a very good use case where uh, functions come into the picture because now uh, the internet is out there across the world, right? So a lot of people are using it and a lot of uh, applications are multi-language, like regional, it comes with regional languages. So this also helps in, uh, you know, Cloud Function helps in translations as well. And more importantly, the payment systems, right? So when you make a booking, uh, your payment gateway calls your endpoint. So before functions, you will not, there's no way to do this instead of relying on uh, external services because you cannot call a function call a firebase project from an external service so with functions you can open up the books with which you know your uh, your stripe or paddle or uh, paypal or uh, you know any of the payment gateway can send messages on on a booking is successful with which you can just compare the ID and all those things and then process it similarly uh, for for one of my firebase application i built a zapier integration like uh, for, uh, I built a Zap with the help of Firebase, so with webhooks. So I opened up uh, some of the webhooks, and then I, I uh, with functions, I called uh, some of the uh, ZPS input. So you can able to build integrations, third-party integrations, like Z Jira integration, Slack integration, all those things you can build with the help of Cloud Functions. So these are the major common use case uh, people use Cloud Functions for, and. Um, Common challenges people face is that you need to write code and then so even though it's very uh, you know very straightforward writing code and then managing it so every time you make a change you need to deploy it now thankfully they brought in the emulators but earlier uh, it was very challenging right and whenever and majorly for people who are doing consulting uh, when they want to replicate some of the code from other projects like email sending emails or resizing images translation payment gateway webhooks all those things it's very very hard like you know you need to write it again deploy it to this project and it's not it's not like a library that people people can use it so and also setting up functions were a little difficult where you need to deploy it and like not not like an easy to deployment but still you need to it takes some time to deploy and all those things so these were common challenges so the the community started uh, you know talking about few things like how do we solve this how do we come to a uh, common road where we can put something out in the market and people can use it. So I have created uh, a set of specific function for specific lifecycle functions for indexing my application, indexing my data in Algolia, right? So Algolia is nothing but a search engine, uh, a hosted service search engine. So every time my data is generated or updated, it will index in Algolia. So this is a very common uh, problem for multiple people. But how do I use share my code to them to use that? So only ways to open source my Git, I mean cloud functions, but there's no out of way, out of box solution to you know out of box uh, mechanism to do this, right? Like WordPress plugins or or your uh, uh, your plugin system. So that's where uh, Firebase extension comes into picture, right? You to make a commonly used functions, commonly used uh, modules uh, into a fun into an extension which can be outsourced to pe multiple people to use. Currently, there are some uh, set of uh, you know um, set of functions that uh, Firebase team as, uh, as well developed itself developed, and uh, currently they are trying to bring bring in the marketplace where developers developers can contribute their own uh, you know packages like a plugin marketplace. Uh, so that is still in development. So we are looking at and uh, you know hopefully in the near future. But that's the goal. That, that I'll also talk about that goals and everything in the future. But Ideally, that is what we are heading towards. So uh, there is no there is no search indexing uh, uh, functions yet. So if I develop it, I can you know give it to the crowd, and then people can just install it, configure it, and use it. So uh, that is the major uh, you know that is the major leverage that we get out with uh, extensions. No, no, not writing code. Only earlier before cloud function, there was a case you don't have to write any backend code. So when they bring in cloud functions, they made you know you you can you can write back in code to add on more functionality. Now this more functionality, whichever is common, uh, very common, like you know welcome email, th 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 thumbnail generation, deleting dependent data, uh, you know payment processing, searching, search indexing, and push notifications. Like you want to send push notifications to certain users on certain uh, conditions, right? So these things now they are looking at uh, making it modular so that. People have to, doesn't have to code 
code it. Right? You, don't, you don't have to code uh, welcome emails anymore. You just need to configure it, make a small uh, you know update in your application. The emails are going to go, go autom automatically. So that's kind of the leverage that we get with the function like extensions. So uh, these are the collection of extensions currently Firebase is supported. Uh, Firebase is you know deployed in their uh, in their marketplace or in their uh, uh, application like which which developers can use it right away. And uh, so if you can see, I, I don't know if it's uh, let me try to zoom in. No, I think anyways. So the first is the resize images where you know you upload an image to a bucket. It automatically resizes to multiple. Uh, Multiple versions, like small, medium, large, right? So something like if you build a chat app and uh, you want to resize a image on upload, whenever the user sees it, they'll see the smaller version. When they download it, they see the larger version. Something like that, or profile pictures, uh, or uh, social media photos, and, like various use cases comes into picture. So you can just install it. You configure which bucket you need to listen to and what are the formats that you need to generate. All that's it. So you don't have to write code for it. You don't have to write uh, image magic code or node, uh, you know, uh, node uh, image magic code or anything like that. So it, it comes out of the box. Similarly, uh, export collections to BigQuery. Like you know, if you want to do some sort of analytics on top of uh, your data, just export it to BigQuery to specific uh, data store, and then you can write your BigQuery logic there. So you don't have to uh, worry about how this bridging works. It it works out out of the box. Similarly, trigger email. So as I said, sending welcome email, sending a subscription successful email, or order completion email, those things you can start using. I mean, you can just configure uh, how your email goes from where, which SMTP it goes, and all those things. And then you just need to write one uh, data, which, which this is what I will be showing in the demo. You just need to write the data, and then email automatically goes. Similarly, there are more, uh, I mean, more information like uh, you know, sub sending subscription. Uh, sending Mailchimp, you know, your, your data going to Mailchimp, it, it can be automated. Deleting the user data on, deleting of the user, uh, translation, invoice, sending the invoice whenever the new order in. So these two are made by Stripe. Uh, I, Stripe is the first uh, third-party developer with extension, but now they are bringing in. I, I, I guess they are going to bring it with uh, multiple, uh, you know, any developer like any third-party developer can build the extension and publish in the marketplace. So that that is what I'm looking forward to because I can also publish some of the application, some of the uh, extension, and then I can also use people's extension, not rather than a few companies, right? So and various other things also comes into picture. So uh, yeah, the future of extension is like marketplace where you can just uh, list your application like an integration, just go install it and then use it. And also, you can just custom build and ship it. Like, for example, if you are a, a consulting agency and you you work with the various uh, Firebase project, you can build extension for your own, like a very you know, uh, like how to say, uh, internal applications, in internal uh, extension that uh, very specific to your set of customers. And whenever you want, you can just import it and then run it. So that's kind of the uh, you know, future that we are looking with extensions. So let's try to uh, get into a small demo, and uh, in which I will show you uh, how to, you know, use this extension, where to where to find it, how to use it. So, uh, so this is the landing page, uh, extensions landing page. In, like uh, you can see all the details about the extension. So this is what I was showing you in the other slide. Uh, just a screenshot of this one. So I a few things that you must just like shortening an URL. Like if you're writing a CMS application or a blog system where you want to every time you create a URL, you need to shorten it and then use it for sharing. You can automatically do this, and also you can like generating uh, you know marketing uh, URL. You can just do this, and also uh, limiting side notes like at specific number of uh, nodes you cannot go in uh, in, in real time database right you can have json structure but you can limit the number of paths that you can create in json structure those kind of things you can do with uh, uh, the extensions so i have created a sample project for our uh, talk so here if you can see this is an extension so when you click on it you will get into the extension so i already created one extension uh, the trigger email but you can also have you can also install any further extensions right so if you if you prefer, I can also create a new project uh, because I was just trying out this one. I'll show you how to create a new extension, but it'll take uh, like around five minutes. So I'll skip that uh, setting apart and I'll move on to here. So let me create a new GDG demo. GDG demo. Right. So I create a new project, and so I can just skip this one. 
it's like typically creating a norm, normal Firebase project, nothing specific to extension. So uh, every time you create a new Firebase project, it sets up to all the, I know, um, Firestore and all those things. It takes up time. Okay, continue and it takes you to. So this is your application Firebase dashboard where you can see this build module, the list monitor, analytics engage. So here there's a small thing called extension. So before I just upgrade my payment with it because some of the external APIs will not work if you're in free plan. I'll just go to this one. So pay as you go is one of the you know best uh, uh, plan that we use because it comes with along with free plans uh, uh, you know elements and uh, on top of it you will will be charged for whatever you use. So anyway, so this is the extension uh, gallery. So you can also explore other extensions. So I will start with a uh, trigger email. So this is a very common extension that people use. And uh, this is a very common use case that people struggle with as well. So I think this demoing this will be a good, uh, you know, good start for you to show you wh what potentially uh, extensions can do. So you just need to go install it. So it just asks for, you know, processing queue, like, you know, it needs to listen to the changes in the document and stuff like that. So I'm going to find this billing enabled. So we can go with this, and it's going to listen to the uh, cloud data. No data store user. It's going to access that one. This is the configuration. So as I said, whenever you want to send an email, you need to use SMTP protocol. And uh, so when we do with cloud function, we configure all these things in code. Uh, like we will use Node Mailer. So even this is using Node Mailer, but uh, we will manually configure it. So here, I'm going to uh, I'm going to use a dummy SMTP for now for the demo. So I use the Mailtrap application, so where you can create a SMTP configuration and then use it for testing purposes. So this is my um, this is my SMTP uh, sample. So I'm just going to copy. I'm just going to copy this. Just put it, and you need to put it SMTP. Mm -hmm. And you need to username and password. So I just take the user and password from here. ID and port. So you just need to copy and paste this. And this collection is basically uh, a small collection that uh, will be used to listen to new emails that will be sent, right? So whenever you want to send an email, you need to create a create a document in this collection that automatically uh, listened by this extension and then sends out an email. So for example, I'll just give emails. So I'm just going to create use a collection called emails under which all the mails will be created and that mail will be sent. You can also give, set a default from message. For example, I'll just give my email entry and also the reply to the same thing. And these are optional. So where you know where you define which is the user collection if you want to pull some data from the user uh, user table, uh, user collection. And this is also the template. Like you have multiple like sign up template and all those things. Like I'm just going to skip these two for now because I don't want to complicate uh, the setup. So once I do installation, it is going to take around three to five minutes. So the same setup I've did in the pro previous project. So you can just, I, it's already installed because it will take some time. So I'm just skipping that part. If you notice, uh, this is the SMTP, the same SMTP I used, emails collection. The uh, from email, I will give one like example test at example.com. So now we have configured it. If you want to con change, change any configuration or anything like that, you can just go here and then do it, right? So now the beautiful part is that uh, all you have to do if you want to send an email is uh, just going to Cloudify store. I'm going to create a emails collection and I'm going to create a new document. So this document should be in a specific format so that uh, the extension understands this and then sends out an email. So for example, the document idea, I can give anything. And in the field, I need to have a two field to which email ID I'm going to send it. So I can just give uh, my official email ID and uh, there'll be another uh, data called map. I will just change it to map. And here, so map is nothing but an object structure. So where you need to, uh, you can uh, uh, give uh, nested, uh, like, like a JSON structure. So I'm going to give uh, another field called HTML. 
so what is the html uh, content that's going to go on so when you write in code you will not have this uh, no you you can just dump your build your html and then dump it there so here i'm just going to give h1 hello and h1 right so i'm just going to send a hello message and you need to also give a subject so here hello friend. So this is all I need. I need a two uh, to which mail ID it's going to, and uh, the HTML and the subject under the message object. So this will uh, give uh, you know this 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 is all you need as a bare minimum for sending out email. So when you want to send an email, you just need to create this uh, document inside that collection that you configured. In in our case, it's the email collection. When I save it, so this email this uh, document gets created. Similarly, as soon as uh, it gets created, the functions automatically creates the delivery uh, report. So it it uh, how many, so this is basically done by the function, the extension itself. So it listens to this one, sends the email, updates this here. So you'll get when, uh, how many attempts made. Like sometimes the email email will not go, so it will retry again. And uh, what is the error in case of any error? And what is accepted? What is pending? And what is rejected? So if there are multiple emails. Which one got sent? And which one got? Which one is still pending? Which one is uh, no rejected? All those things, all those information will get, and the status is success. So similarly, uh, you can just see the mail. We got the email, right? So I don't. I didn't write any code uh, for sending an email from uh, my Firebase application to your users. Like uh, I didn't write any specific code. I just created, configured the functions, created the document. The mail is sent. So. You can uh, like still this is installing, so skip the part. So you can configure any type. Uh, you also have options to you know configure uh, context. It's nothing but uh, node mailers, uh, node mailers, whatever uh, node mailer structure that we have, we'll be using the same. So if you go to node So you can see the you can see the configuration from two subject and all those things. So this is the same thing that we will be using with the same structure we'll be using in our uh, document as well. So whatever you write here will be the same thing uh, that goes out. So you also have a few more options for the file extension. So if you wanted to know the detailed information about the extension, you're gonna go to the about page. You can see yeah, not even configure. So you can see how uh, you can configure these uh, thing, interplay to email and all those things. Similarly, there will be a documentation. <laughs> now you can use handlebar, handlebar templating for if you want to send a custom HTML uh, template, you can use handlebar. So basically the, the, the idea here is that, you know, you can automate a lot of things without uh, touching basically any code. So you can also install furthermore things like uh, resizing. If you take a look at resizing. <laughs> so if you want to resize an image, you just need to go configure this. Cloud storage access and you, uh, that's it and storage admin and yeah so the sizes of the resize uh, you can just configure which size you want to resize so this is the bucket name so where which it will listen for uh, data and storage part so where should the thumbnails save right so for example and uh, the path contains the images they want to resize so which is the path that we're going to resize like i'll, I'll start with uh, pictures so any data that is dropped under this pictures path will be automatically resized and then move to the thumb uh, thumb path, absolute path of the root. So I'm just going to skip these things. So you want to convert to JPG or PNG? I'll just say JPG. So you just configure it. It's going to take some time to install. So and whenever in, it install, what you have to do? Like all, all you have to do is just go to storage and then you just need to upload like programmatically or uh, uh, you know from the admin panel so you just need to upload and automatically the resize will happen because it's going to take some time that's 
So here, the motors, let's see the kind of extensions. It's going to take like around three to five to five minutes. So that's that. That's the basic idea about you know extensions, how it can be useful. So without uh, you know writing any code or with the minimal configuration, there are some prepackaged applications that we can use, and it's also going to be extended, right? If you want to, if you want to integrate Algolia inside your uh, application, you want to listen to some of the data, then you want to index it in Algolia, and uh, so I, I'm just uh, you know visualizing in the future, right? Uh, so it could also be an extension. Which you can just install from the marketplace and then go use it. Similarly, uh, with with inbuilt inbuilt uh, set of function uh, extensions, you can also build these all these options like translating distributed counter. Like if you want to have like a number of posts that's created under a specific collection, so it also can be done. All those things are coming in the future. So this is kind of a high level uh, high level you know uh, understanding about the function. So probably we can uh, take up some questions. You have and questions can be with extensions or uh, beyond extension, like on Firebase on the whole as well. So, yeah. So, hi, hi, Zenith. How are you? Oh. All good. <laughs> yes, all good. All, good. <laughs> all better now that I know how can I sleep better. <laughs> okay, awesome. So, any questions? That uh, well, I don't see any questions. We can wait a little more. Um, it was a lovely presentation, and I learned so much. So thank you for coming. Perfect. Thank you so much. So maybe uh, I'll uh, share my details in case of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will just going back to the presentation. Okay. So this is. Common thing that I you know I want to close off with this code, uh, you know, make it work, make it right, and make it fast. So this is like a kind of uh, code that I you know try, try to follow for any product that I build. I just you know you, whenever you build something, make it work. You know, whatever you do, make it work, and then make it right. Like optimize it. You you know you you clean the code, you clean your entire project and all those things after you make it work. Finally, make it fast. You know, you optimize it. You make it fast. You 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 make it. Uh, you know, uh, use it for a la larger audience, scaling up all those things. So that's kind of uh, thing that I follow, and uh, it goes well with Firebase as well. You know, because it's being the uh, uh, primary POC or uh, any mid-scale project that I do with Firebase, I, I use Firebase. I make it work with Firebase. I scale with Firebase, and in case if I have a pain point, I'll again go and then look into other other solutions. So this is one uh, important. Um, a code that I always like. So, okay. finally, any questions? In case of uh, any questions, we can take it up now. Um, well, I I don't see any questions, but you shared your contact details in the beginning of the presentation, so I think if anyone has. Perfect. So I'll uh, just put okay. my. Very... In case if you anyone want to reach out, you can just reach out to me and uh, over LinkedIn or by email. I don't actively use Twitter, so I'm not putting it here. <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, active in LinkedIn, so you can reach out to me in LinkedIn. And in case of any anything, yeah, we can take it offline as well. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. Thank you so much for uh, your invitation. And this is one place where you can get started with Firebase on the whole. I wish it will be mm -hmm. some of your products. Awesome. Okay, uh, so I don't see any questions for now. All right. Okay, uh, it was lovely meeting you, and thank you very much. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you for so inviting. Okay, uh, so have a nice day, everyone. Have a nice night, and thank, thank you for attending. Bye. Bye. Bye.